everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, and today I've got a video about all the craziness that is coming out of C2E2. People are mad at vendors, people are mad at content creators, people are mad at CGC, and they're just mad at everybody, and we're going to kind of break down why everyone is so angry in the video here. Before we get started, though, if you're new to the channel or you haven't already, please subscribe down at the bottom. I do appreciate it. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most. So while there are a lot of different people that are angry at a lot of different things, they all basically stem from one thing, which is the uh, con-exclusive Clayton Crane Ultimate Fallout 4 facsimile reprint, recover thing, which has caused a lot of issues on the secondary market. It's also caused a lot of issues with grading criteria and a lot of this stuff probably could have been cleared up fairly easily but then a lot of individuals involved in the process I think tried to take a moral high ground in a position where they should have just had more transparency and has caused a lot of issues so before we get too far into the weeds we'll break it down kind of step by step on what had happened and what how it's kind of playing out right now in the comic book community so the book itself is a Clayton Crane cover of Ultimate Fallout 4 the facsimile print that came out a few months ago, it's the exact same book on the inside, which I think is causing some problems for some individuals. Basically, that book was taken by Black Flag, who was the original distributor of the book and that particular cover, and they got a new acetate cover, you know, very 90s of them, and slapped it on the outside of the book and stapled that onto their book, thus creating a new variant of the book, which is still the exact same book with just a new cover stapled onto it. Now, if you had done this to any other book and then sent it to CGC, you would have gotten all kinds of weird stuff on your labels, green labels, purple labels, depending on what kind of cover you chose to use for it. But at the very least, you wouldn't get a universal grade and you certainly wouldn't get a good universal grade. However, there have been some copies of this book that have already been sent to CGC, have already been graded, did get a blue label, and you know, to twist the knife that much more, uh, several of them are coming back as 9.9s or 10 O's. Because if you're not aware of this, you know, once the cover shifts from the you know original Clayton Crane cover to this acetate cover, now that's the cover that they're grading for the defects on the book, which is going to be a marvelous thing to grade because it's acetate like it's a you know firm plastic it's not going to you know have you know the binary tears uh, and the edge wear or color rub on it it's gonna make it really easy to get those high grades so it's you know a little uh, bit of a soft spot for people who are really into grading comics people who have you know married covers on older books and you know had their grades severely affected by it to have CGC take a stance like this on this particular book is is very odd. And I don't think it's something that they will end up standing behind because I do think it sets a very bad precedent going forward to take either old inventory uh, that may not be 9.8 material and to, for all intents and purposes, make it an exclusive to give it a new cover and a new lease on life. It's not something I think the community wants or them as a company really wants to find themselves you know propagating so I could see them reversing their decision on this particular book which could make the blue labels that are out there that much more highly sought after so you kinda have a catch-22 situation there you'd like to see it corrected but at the same time you hate to see the problems that it has caused be rewarded with a more valuable book on the other side so but I do personally think this is something that CGC will address and it's just only had a few days to kind of simmer out. So this has got a lot of people upset from the grading community as a whole because this is just not how they do business up until this point. A uh, similar kind of outrage came out when Bad Idea Comics had their invisible comics that came out and they basically just assigned them arbitrary grades, you know, as a nice little kind of fun thing. And the problem came into the fact whenever this nice little fun thing that was just kind of supposed to be given out started selling for thousands of dollars and CDC was just like, hey, we just we created something here that we were not in the 
mindset that we were going to be creating and they kind of put a stop to it. I think we'll see a similar response from CGC on this one, but we haven't yet. So that's got a lot of people upset. The next part of kind of that equation is how the distribution of this book was handled. So, and con exclusives, if you're not familiar, if you've never been to a con, like basically anything that's a con exclusive, whether it be comic books, video games, anything like that, there's a line of people who line up, you know, either they buy extra passes or upgraded passes so they can get the in before the con opens or they rush to these lines they do their homework they've got their layouts you know their maps in hand and they're running through these cons to get into the line that they want to get these con exclusives before they are sold out and whether it's true or not i mean you will get people all day long on the internet that swear they were the one in line that it happened to so i was not there i cannot say it happens but regardless the community as a whole has started to believe this rumor that a couple of very prominent individuals in the comic book community jumped the line. So jumping the line in and of itself is something, you know, basically from grade school, we're told only the worst kind of human beings do. Um, it really, you know, from grade school on is just beating into your head that if there's a line, you get in your place in it, and whether it's in a traffic jam, whether it's in the line for the grocery stores, as adults, it is still one of the most infuriating things that you will come across when you see somebody who doesn't follow that basic rule. So that is enough to aggravate most people out there. Furthermore, the, the individuals that are in question also bought very large quantities of books that were extremely limited from these people. So again, we've got these individuals who've been waiting to get, you know, maybe their one to even five copies, you know, for their friends that sent them there. They've been waiting in line. They slept outside to be the first one into the con floor. Like, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you the lengths that these people are gonna go to. And then for them to be in that line and then see somebody who they believe cut them in line going and buying up large amounts of the limited availability has just enough to outrage your sanest individual out there. I don't think there's anybody that's out there that can seriously say if they were in that situation and the line was cut off with them that they would not feel a lot of anger and hostility towards the individuals that did that for them. And again, this is a situation that was made worse by the fact that a lot of these individuals, like immediately, when I say immediately, like that day at the con, were selling these things either on whatnot, on their eBay platforms, on their Instagram platforms, the platforms that are followed by the individuals that were behind them in the line or were talking to their friends who were there at the con, and they are now seeing these books that they paid $75, $85 for that are now selling for $200, $300, up to $400. And then it just adds that resentment so much more. So what happens here is you get this community kind of working itself up and fermenting this anger. You're going to hear more stories, I'm sure. Half of them probably aren't going to be true but it doesn't matter. You have a group of individuals who have something that they are angry about, and to be fair, rightfully so. I mean, that is something to be angry about if that is how the situation went down. Is it? We don't know. And the problem is that, what, for me personally, is the community as a whole is a, a, a living thing. You know, just like your family, uh, your friends, your, your, your interpersonal network that you make, like you spend effort to keep those individuals happy. You spend time explaining your actions to those individuals if something looks out of the way because it's important to you what those people think. And you have these influencers that are out there and I have to say every single response I've seen from these influencers has been horrible. Like has just been terrible. They are placing blame, they are diverting, they're making excuses. Instead of just being transparent and just coming out and saying, hey, this is what happened. Like, I was in line. I was, I had already asked if it was okay for me to buy multiple copies for my friends. I, I had already asked 
you know, if there was a limit and they said that there was none. So I made sure that I got there early to get the ones that I wanted. Like all this stuff is just a very easy explanation, but they're, they're getting defensive. They're trying to take moral high ground. And it feels like they're really putting a lot of emphasis on being right. And it's just not coming across. It's, it's coming across very poorly to, to the individuals who are supporting them. These the people who click on their videos, the people who watch their live streams, the people who bid on their auctions, like those individuals are what make their business just like any other business that's out there. And if those individuals aren't happy, you need to address those individuals and find out why they're not happy and either explain yourself in a way that, you know, they can understand or apologize if it's really something that they still don't feel like they were treated right for. That's just the nature of the business. Now, people are very forgiving by nature, and there are some people out there that are just trolls by nature. I think it's too easy for somebody who is in a social media presence to just assume everything negative that is coming at them is coming from trolls. Because probably up until this point, everything that was coming at them that was really negative was predominantly just from trolls, but this is genuine criticism. This is general, genuine outrage. This is genuine, like hurt feelings. You know, there's nothing worse than seeing somebody that you look up to and your hobby. And I'm not talking about you know your father, son, grandparents looking up to that kind. Of, like as a, a peer in the hobby, you know, a hobby full of you know all kinds of walks of life with a very common interest. Be like, hey, I like this guy's taste in artwork. I like this guy's taste in stories. I have followed him since he had 30 something subscribers. And then now he comes out and basically tells me that it's his right to go into a con and buy out all the books that he wants to. He was there first, you know, and neener neener, get better uh, or get wrecked. Now, as a person who has run a lot of businesses in my life, as a person who buys comic books and sells comic books from time to time, what happened in the pure sense of what is there? I there's nothing that I find wrong with. I don't I don't personally think that there's anything wrong with selling your inventory. I don't personally think there's anything wrong with glamming up your inventory to help it sell. I don't think there's anything wrong by any person that was in that line to purchase as many copies as they were comfortable with purchasing. Because if you look at all the con prices, though, there are plenty of the books that were purchased that were exclusive here that are worth less than they sold at the exclusives table. So it, it isn't a guarantee. It's not like every time you go and buy out the inventory, you will make money. If that was the case, Black Flag would have been selling them for more at the table. It's just, so I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff in and of itself. Now, in a business, especially a business where you are a personality on the internet, perception overrules everything. And look, I'm not saying that bad publicity is going to just completely dethrone their empires here. Like a lot of these people are big enough to where they can sustain the criticism but I do genuinely feel that most of these content creators do care about the comic book community. Like, you don't get into buying and selling comic books if you don't enjoy the community aspect of it. Like, if it's just about making money, there are plenty of other industries where you can make more money doing something else that you love. I do believe they're passionate about it, and I do think that if they take a step back, they can see the criticism for what it is. I think they have an opportunity to come out. I think some of the stuff they've said since then probably deserves an apology, but just just some clarity. I don't think anybody did anything underhanded here, but it looks and sounds bad for the community as a whole. And whenever the responses that they're getting when they're asking questions is just, you know, hate and insults and, you know, people doubling down on their convictions, it doesn't look good. You know, if someone accuses you of doing something you didn't do, 
and instead of defending yourself, you attack them, it just makes you look like a more guilty individual. And I understand that for a lot of these individuals, they may not be used to this kind of criticism. And honestly, that is one of the biggest things you have to learn whenever you do run a business is, you know, it's not that the customer is always right, but it, from a value perspective, it is not in your best interest to be right most of the time when it comes to an argument. Uh, that's just my two cents. Uh, if you guys have uh, your own take, please let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, though, guys, Hobby Hero, out.